and gentlemen, I hope you are all having an absolutely fine day. Um, my name is Trisha, and I am with Insectopia. Um, we do this every single week. Um, actually, in October, we've been live streaming every single night. Um, and an event that we've been calling... Invertober! So, um, this has been a wonderful time with you ladies and gentlemen. I've gotten a lot, um... We've, uh, we've gotten a lot accomplished together in the last 18 days. So we've been doing this for, that's a good amount of time, about two and a half weeks. Um, we are about two-thirds of the way done. We are going to be closing in shortly on 10 days left. Um, and one of those days we are going to be doing an entire collection meet and greet. So I might have to set that up shortly. Um, next Monday we're meeting my cats. That should be special and fun. Um, they have a trick to share with you. But there is that. <clears throat> now, I thought that we would do an ink line drawing of a giant water bug. Now, this giant water bug that we're looking at here is um is slightly different i believe nope it's this one so the giant water bug that we have under the microscope is this image here um but i actually i was looking through some of my sketches and i believe that this sketch is of a different species because our giant water bug in our microscope doesn't have these l's here um, but that's also kind of a cool one. And then I found a third image of a giant water bug. And I only thought I had two giant water bug specimens. But this one is labeled as an abetus. And it definitely has different characteristics than this one that was collected in Michigan. So it's definitely not an abetus. So I thought that that was kind of fun. Yeah, Susan, go ahead and get your sketch out. Now, um, here is something kind of wild. When we originally did the sketch, um, when we got to the very end, we closed um, the entire abdomen off thinking that it was wings. I just took that as an assumption that the wings were all the way closed and covering the top of the abdomen. But then I went ahead, um, but then I, I was um, sketching it again today with a student and we had zoomed in really close to the end of the abdomen and notice that the wings are kind of pulled up and I think we can see some of these hydrophobic hairs down here, which is really cool. So actually, I'll just show you. Uh, my cat Sammy is being extra exploratory today, so um, don't be uh, surprised if I uh, yell her name for a minute because she is trying to go all the places she's not supposed to go today. She just knocked down some of my um, some of my dragonfly specimens that were in envelopes, so she's already in a little bit of trouble. Sammy. She's, like, up in the ceiling. Silly cats. All right, so this is what I noticed with my students today. We zoomed in to about here, and we were looking at the top of its, um, the top of its wings because we were talking about, we were looking up here, and we were talking about the wing venation and the fact that they're hemiolytra, so they're half membranous and half um, more sclerotized, more hard. Um, I guess they can say half kind of leathery. So, um, what I did notice, so we had originally talked about right here, this is, um, at the end of this is where their spiracle is, so this is, um, it's essentially functions as a, as a breathing device, and our giant water bug hangs upside down in the water. Now, if we look here, this giant water bug can not only breathe while it's at the, um, while it's at the surface, but when it's diving down into the water, you see all of these hairs. It can hold an air bubble with those hairs. 
Um, so those hairs are going to be what we call hydrophobic, meaning that as the giant water bug is diving down into the water, those hairs kind of catch an air bubble and carry it with them. And normally, that whole section here is um, covered by the wings. But this specimen... But this specimen, you can see the hair along the entire top of the abdomen. And I thought that was so cool. So we would consider those Right, because they're insects, they're not technically hairs, they're CT. But we would call those hydrophobic CD because they are water resistant essentially. And I think that actually translates to water fearing. So the uh, family for this giant water bug is Bellostomatidae. Oh wait, I've got. I should probably. I should probably zoom all the way out. Ah, uh, the one I have is a Betis. and it has those two diagonal U's on the pronotum. Yes. That is the one that we sketched together. And I do have that specimen here, too. Um, it might be interesting to see differences in this one. They'll have the same overall body shape. They will have different um, colors and designs on their pronotum and their wings. Yeah, I was pretty excited to find all of these sketches. I actually, I also probably want to do an ink outline of the bottom of the head, because I think that that one is pretty good. So we'll probably do that too. <clears throat> Oh, we lost track. Sorry. So, um, <clears throat> no, the one that we're looking at under the microscope is actually in the genus Bellostoma. Um, it's not the abetus specimen that we were looking at before. So you may not want to modify your original drawing, but you could write about it because even though you can't see it, even though you can't see it on the abetus, um, because the wings are covering it, the abetus likely also has very, very similar structures. All right. And you know, when I was doing the pronotum on this friend here, it looks like I didn't get some of that coloration in. So maybe I'll just go ahead and do that really quick. Got a light part that comes down like these. So I hope you have been doing well, Susan. Um, I am so happy to see you here again today. That's going to be my shape that's a little bit darker. All right, let's go ahead and do this ink outline. Um, this sketch, I actually, this one that we're doing right now, um, I actually did it today with a student. So it might be the, um, it might be the first sketch that I did the sketch and the ink on the same day. All right, so we've got a lot of those head features figured out. I am going to go ahead and put the shapes on it for the colorations. Um, now our pronotum is next. <clears throat> it does still have that really nice angled pronotum. So normally on um, so normally on ink line days, uh, we do two or three sketches 
And we go for the normal kind of hour and a half time from 10 to about 11.30-ish. Um, but today, today I'm thinking that we just do the one and then maybe like the ventral side of the head, but stick to one, to one, um, to one specimen. Um, I am starting to feel a little bit under the weather and I really, really hope that I'm not getting sick. But I've been interacting with a lot of people in the public <clears throat> recently and, um, I had a handful of students who said that their families got sick, so I am hoping that we're all good. But that just might mean that um, we can't go the whole hour and a half. All right, so um, we have right here that center triangle. That is our scutellum, spelled S-C-U-T-E-L-L-U-M, if you're writing it down. The uh, scutellum is that segment generally in between the wings. This wing here... Um, is on the top, and then you've got a wing kind of tucked underneath it. Um, because giant water bugs are true bugs, they have what we call hemi-elytra, where their wings are half membranous and half hard, or half, I like to say leathery. I think the half that's a little bit harder, it's not, it's not like a beetle. It's more like, it's more like a tegmina. It's more kind of like a, um, a dragonfly's, or not dragonfly, a, um, grasshopper's front wing. <coughs> uh, but it, we call them hemi-elytra, and that is because they are half seas. And pretty much, well, many, many um, of the true bugs have those types of wings. The true bug order is Hemiptera and was literally named for having those Hemiolytra. But um, there are a number of them that have purely membranous wings. The more common examples of true bugs that have all membranous wings rather than Hemiolytra are insects like aphids. Those are pretty common um, common knowledge insects that people know about because they affect gardens. Um, cicadas, they're a true bug, and they have two pairs of membranous... Um, they have two pairs of membranous wings, so they don't have hemiolytra either. But many of them do, like stink bugs. Now, I love that hair back here at the back of the abdomen that's all hydrophobic. Um, so I went ahead when I was sketching our friend here, I went ahead and drew kind of the overall shape and feeling of these hairs. And I just want to get them in with ink because I just think that they are so unique and beautiful. And I love that um, they almost look like they're combed together. And I wonder if they do kind of comb their hydrophobic hairs with their hind legs. Maybe we'll look at the hind legs and see if they have any cool features that might help them comb hairs. All right, so we've got the backside of our giant water bug figured out. I want to go ahead and give our outlines to our legs. Our legs are three segmented femur, tibia, and tarsi. Now, my giant water bug's front pair of legs, we call these raptorial front legs. They're the same type of legs that praying mantids have. So they have the ability to grab onto their food and um, eat that way. Um, giant water bugs are venomous, so they do have venom glands. They inject venom into their prey animals. They'll eat, um, uh, they'll eat fish and other insects. They will eat tadpoles. Essentially, anything that's moving and in the water that they can catch, they can eat. 
um, because when they pierce with that front, um, with that mouth part, they and inject venom, they paralyze their prey. So whether or not they're alive, that doesn't matter because they're not going to be moving anywhere. So they can just sit and eat them in one place. Giant water bugs, even though they have a hind pair of leg, that if it if you cut a cross section of this hind tibia, it's actually triangular rather than ovoid or um or like uh, perfectly circular. This is a triangle, and that actually is going to help kind of like a blade. It's gonna help them swim like this. So it's um, so they have the ability to kind of push against the water with the flat side, and then the triangular side lets the water go by easier. <clears throat> Very good. So um, I believe I've gotten all of the pencil lines for our giant water bug here, at least for the legs on the left-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and erase. Oh, wait. I need to do the cross-hatching in the eyes. I'm going to do that after I erase the pencil so I can see what I'm doing. I'm in it for the long haul, though I always worry I'm getting so chatty over here. <laughs> oh no. Susan, I don't um I don't think that's the case. I feel like when people are talking and interacting in the chat, more people are likely to interact. So if you are out there and you are afraid to interact, please join us in the chat. We have a good time. It looks like my pen is kind of doing weird things. It's kind of going in and out, fading in and out. So, um, I might have to, I might go over this one more time with the pen to clean up some of these lines that got dirtied. Yeah. So some of these lines up in here, they, um, they didn't come out cleanly. They're kind of, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go back in here and see if I can fix some of these. Maybe I went too fast. The pen was like, no, slow down. Or as my mom would say, slow down, you're going too fast. See, those lines look much better. So we're just going to go back over really quick these lines and make sure that they are visible and try not to shadow them too much. I guess when I was doing it over the pencil, I kind of noticed that this was happening, but I didn't realize how severe it was. Next time I will stop and make sure that the ink is going, is, is moving smoothly. And then down here just a little bit. Maybe there's a dead spot in my pen. This is fine, though. I'm sorry, I'm late. I had to pick up my eyeglasses. That is all right. Um, that's, a, that's all right. You had to pick up your glasses. Now you can see us and join in on the fun. So I'm glad that you can see us. And yeah, the... Um, But the nibs do eventually get blunted. Yeah. And I've got a good number of them behind me, but I was hoping to continue using this one for as long as I possibly can. Uh. Do you have, I guess you, um, 
I guess you ladies and gentlemen would be the people to ask. And I know I probably can go on to the, um, I probably could go on to the Nature Journaling Club and get all of the, uh, everybody's opinions too. But, um, do you have pens that you like that you prefer? Um, cause I was just about to purchase a, a, a set of pens and it, it's actually already in my Amazon, um, cart. I was just waiting a couple days to purchase it. But my question to you is, should I not buy Micron? Is there a, is there an, is there another really good, like another good quality pen that would work for this type of stuff? that you would recommend? There. Somehow it got bumped. I've done color on some of these. It's hard to get all the detail and the color. True. <laughs> um, I can totally see that because uh, we are going live and and I'm, um, I'm not adding color into mine. So I imagine trying to kind of keep up with my speed and adding color might be a little bit difficult. Um, I, I like to give people enough time to... Um, do both pairs of legs, for instance, but um, maybe not enough time to do all of that. But it's kind of like a fun challenge, right? Over time, I'm sure you'll get, uh, I'm sure that they um, have improved. I love when you cross hatch in the compound eyes. I feel like. It makes the insect look completely alive. I like Topic Multiliners and Pigma Microns. Ooh. Yes. So I was planning on getting, um, so I had pulled out a set of Micron, um, I had pulled out, a um, a set of Micron pens that were, um, they had like six or seven different sizes. And so I was kind of, I was kind of thinking that that would be my new, like, my new uh, test on online would be to kind of play around with the thicknesses of pens. Um, I think that it would be very helpful, especially with like ha insect hairs, um, antenna probably sometimes. Um, some of the cross hatching in the eyes I would love to do with a thinner pen so that you could get more of those segments. So yes, ideally I was gonna get more, get, get several sizes. But Topic Multiliners and Copic Microliners. You like Micron pens, but they're water soluble. Yeah, and see, um, I purposely have our, these, um, I have these Micron pens, they're, you know, they're archival ink, so they don't run in water, and they don't run in, um, they don't run in ethanol, which is exactly why I use them, because you can, um, I actually started, um, I purchased them originally to hand write, um, insect labels, because a lot of times when you are writing out insect labels, you want to write them in archival ink so that it doesn't fade. And if you make it in archival ink, then you, um, then you can put the labels either on a pin or you can actually put it directly into the ethanol and it doesn't bleed or anything. All right, so I'm just getting our um, our head here, the bottom of our head outlined. 
Um, I was thinking that this would be a really cool time to talk about the Venoms. So what I can do is turn our friend upside down so we can see its mouth parts. And I can just turn the labels because the head extends over the edges and we don't even have to take off the labels. That's my favorite. So the striping on the legs, I just went off my camera screen. Too close. We're going to fix that. There we go. Um, so the striping on the legs, on the tibia here, and the spotting on the, uh, the femur and the tibia on the middle legs, I feel like is a character that gets you down into at least... I think it gets you down, once you know it's a Bellastoma, I think that you can, it helps you identify it to species, actually. But I'm no good, um, I'm no good past the genus in, in giant water bugs just yet. I would have to look it up and do a little bit of research before I was to tell you um, exactly what species we were looking at here. Hi, Marley! <clears throat> We were looking at the bottom of the, we were looking at the ventral side of the head of a giant water bug. And we were talking a little bit about its venom. So when we're looking right about here, let's grab Terry. Hi, Terry. Um, this tube right here that goes all the way up and then seems to kind of go into the head in the front, that's actually kind of the feeding tube. That's the tube that my giant water bug is actually drinking out of. Um, I believe that these two squares to the side, those are essentially pumps that help them drink their food. I believe that's what they are. Now, um, this part here is, we like to call it the stabby part. Um, giant water bugs have that piercing and sucking mouth part where they pierce with this end, and you can see it's more like a sheath. Like it's a protective guard around the straw. So it helps pierce into their prey. They inject venom, and then they drink it through the straw like a bug slurpee. Or a frog slurpee, depending on what they grabbed onto. Oh, I appreciate you coming in and saying hi. Um, I was uh, telling the ladies just a minute ago that it's possible that we were actually going to be ending after the one insect today. Um, just maybe we might be closing it in around, at around 30 minutes rather than the normal hour and a half. Just because I'm feeling a little bit under the weather and I want to make sure I get some extra sleep tonight if I have to fight off a bug that is approaching We've got a lot of sick um, students here, like a bunch of students who are un uh, under the weather, and I did teach a number of them. All right. You know what's funny? I was looking at this giant water bug, and I spent a good amount of time trying to find... This giant water bug's antenna. I can't find them. <laughs> I didn't Google it yet. Let's see. Supposedly, they have a pair of four segmented antenna that are concealed under the gro in grooves beneath the head. So, it would be on the bottom side of the head. I'm seeing if I can find these little antenna for us. Okay. So, I think I know what it's supposed to look like. Let's go see if we can find it. So they said, in the grooves under the head, under the eyes. Mm -hmm. 
See, that's what it looks like under the eyes, and I don't see it there. See, I did this for a little bit of time earlier, and I, and I am stumped. When they say concealed, they really mean concealed. Um, I'm curious what the backside of our abdomen looks like from the bottom. So let's go ahead and, oh, cool. All right, so check this out. The, um, the abdominal sclerites here on the edges, they seem to be kind of see-through. So right about here where you're looking at this line, where you're looking at that line here, that's actually the line that's created by the hair on the other side of the abdomen. Um, this is where the water, um, this is where the air would go in so that our beautiful bellostoma, our giant water bug, could take a deep breath. And this is what, <gasps> I figured it out. You may be wondering, but Trisha, what did you figure out? And I just wanted to show you this really quick. When we were looking at our giant water bug, we noticed that it had, you may not have noticed because I didn't point it out, but I noticed and I didn't mention anything that that has these black dots along the sides, um, along the undersides of the abdomen. Those are spiracles. That is a way to breathe. And I was always told, always, that giant water bugs breathe by hanging upside down in the water and using the end of their abdomen like a snorkel, right? That's how they breathe. Now, a lot of times insects that have gills will have other types of appendages, but they're not going to have these very obvious open spiracles. And so I had been pondering about this, and it just came to me. Giant water bugs are only, I mean, they're fully aquatic, but in the nighttime, they do come out of the water and they fly around. Um, it helps them transport themselves from one lake to another lake. Um, it helps them find mates. And for all of those reasons, it helps with like the genetics um, mixing of their, spe of, their, of their family. So for all of those reasons, our giant water bugs need the ability to breathe while they're in the water and the ability to breathe while they're out of the water. So these spiracles that are on the bottom side of the abdomen are the method that the giant water bug is going to use to breathe at nighttime when he's flying, when he or she is flying around outside of the water. And then those hydrophobic hairs and the little respiration system, this guy, um, that little respiration system on the bottom of the abdomen, that's for when our giant water bug is out there in the water. Um, the zebra pen gives some line variation so you can write very gently. Okay. Futu Yaku. I need to be writing all of these pen suggestions down. I really appreciate it because I'm going to be purchasing pens soon. And I wanted to, you know, purchase something a little, I wanted to purchase something nice. There was a little edge of something under there. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. So when I was looking at the bottom of the head, I did see some type of edge or notch, but I wasn't seeing the antenna. Um, it's possible that they were very much just hidden. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's kind of cool and odd that it, their antenna are so small and tucked away, but I guess if you are not worried about, like, running into things, um, 
they don't really need to sense the world around them with their antenna because they can sense, I'm sure that they can sense water currents um, as larger animals are swimming by. Well, okay, that, <laughs> Susan, that's so funny. Yeah, how can it sense anything with the antenna if it's there tucked away? I have no idea. My guess, I would shoot out a guess and say that the antenna, I would say that the antenna are probably, are more likely chemo sensors than anything else. So they're probably picking up chemical cues in the water as the giant water bug is swimming around. That would be my guess. I'm not sure. I, um, I haven't read anything about it. Um, uh, so yeah, um, so that's one thing that I've never looked up, but I would guess it was for chemo reception in the water. So, um, Susan, that's a great question, and I would like to answer it for you. So you said it breathes through those spiracles with a butt bubble? Not exactly. When it is... get this refocused all right so when my giant water bug is breathing underwater it's going to have those spiracles that are on the bottom side of its abdomen closed I don't think it has the ability to um, dissolve to pull dissolved oxygen out of the water um, and that's why giant water bugs don't need highly oxygenated water because when they're swimming they use their butt snorkel all right so this appendage right here they'll kind of stick it up over the over the top of the edge of the water and then they have the ability to pull oxygen down um, now that's how they breathe underwater. They've got a spiracle that's right about here at the base of that. Now um, they also do have these hydrophobic hairs. So when they do dive under the water for um, for larger times, they will hold an air bubble. But it's not going to be an air bubble on the bottom side of their abdomen. It's an air bubble in between their abdomen and the wings above the abdomen. All right. So it's actually an air bubble like. The air bubble is the cream to the Oreo cookie. There's the wings, the air bubble, and then the abdomen. And that's how they're going to breathe when they're swimming. And that's why I was wondering why in the world they even have spiracles on the bottom because they're not going to use them when they're underwater. But they don't use them while they're underwater. They use the other spiracles that we saw on the underside of the abdomen only when they're flying around. When they come out of the water and they are out in open oxygen I, or open air, I believe that those are the spiracles that they would use. So that answers those questions, I hope and I believe. Um, yeah, so I was excited because I just saw and I was playing with this giant water bug today and I noticed that the wing was tucked and we hadn't seen that before. So I really wanted to share it. All right, so I don't think, I haven't heard any more questions. Um, I like to give everybody just an extra minute to see if they're going to come up with a question while you're sketching or doing any of the other things. So um, other than that, I do want to kind of head off for the night. 40 minutes is um, pretty good. It's not as long as all of our other classes have been, um, but I'm you know, maybe about to lose my voice, and I'm supposed to be back on the news on Friday, so I'm not going to get sick, all right? I'm just going to will myself into not getting sick. It's going to be great.
why don't we get spiracles at various convenient points around the body so no matter what we're doing, we can breathe in whatever way we want? I think... So, that is very much an insect physiology question about how the internal organs and how the respiration system works in insects. It's something I've always um, been interested in, but I haven't done a lot of reading on it. So, I'll share with you what I know as kind of with, a, with an asterisk that is, um, there's probably a lot more to it. So... Uh, you don't generally get any spiracles ever in the head region. Um, just because the head is so busy doing all of the other things, and a lot of times it's very heavily sclerotized. It also protects the main um, nervous system um, ganglia, which people believe is kind of what is similar to like a brain-ish um, so you don't get any spiracles up in the head. There are insects that have spiracles on the thorax and on the abdomen. Um, they are always along the sides of the insect. They are never on the top or on the bottom. Um, not that I can think of readily. Um, this giant water bug is a little bit of a flatter shape, so the um, spiracles are more on the bottom. But if we were to actually look at those plates, they are on the what we would consider the lateral plates, even though it's kind of, kind of the bottom. Um, I'll go ahead and show that to you so you can understand what I'm saying. Um, so why don't we get spiracles everywhere? Those spiracles... Alright, so we're going to go with this one first. Um, here we are. So this is the bottom side of our giant water bug. And right about here, these are what we would consider the abdominal tergites. No, sternites. Yes. Um, these are what we would consider the abdominal sternites, spelled S-T-E-R-N-I-T-E-S, -E -E just meaning they're the ones on the bottom. And then if you see, there's this line here. And then past that line, that's where our spiracles are, those dots there. Um, and so those are what we would consider the lateral segments, or the segments on the side. Then you're going to have one long segment on the top that goes from this side all the way to the other side. So it's more like a flat disc, but those are where the lateral sides came from. Um... Yeah, so we don't have spiracles on the top or the bottoms of the insects generally, and what I would assume is that it's due to the way that air diffuses into the body. Um, insect blood does not carry oxygen, like our blood carries oxygen around our bodies. Um, the insect respiration system is those, those um, spiracles, they open up, and they open up into empty tubes and the air comes into their body and then those tubes get smaller and smaller and smaller and branch out and branch out and branch out so far that they um that they feed oxygen to every cell in the body um which blows my mind a little bit because i don't really understand how it works um but that is what i've been told Humans should get to have all the cool bug body parts, right? I agree. I want a tail that I can use as a, as a snorkel <laughs> so I can swim longer. Oh, thank you, Deb, for, um, thank you, Deb, for joining us. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're closing in on the last 10 days of October, right? So, Deb over here is talking about Invertober. It's when, it's where I've been live streaming every single night of October, and it has been a wonderful time. Um, but I'm going on vacation to Arizona. Oh, that's exciting! 
Okay. Um, I love that you get to go on vacation to Arizona. Arizona is definitely one of my favorite states. Um, I love the bug collecting out there too. Um, October is a little bit late to be collecting bugs, but it's still a beautiful state. Um, so I hope you have a wonderful time. Ah, oh, perfect. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your night, ladies and gentlemen. I hope to see you soon. Um, Deborah, if it's not until November, I'll see you in November on a normal Thursday or Sunday when we go back to live streaming twice a week. Um, <clears throat> that'll be fun. And I should be able to have enough time to be posting whiteboard videos once I'm not live streaming every night. So we'll see about that. Um, join us for Invertober next Monday. We are um, next Monday. We're we're meeting my cats. Um, the Monday afterwards, we're finishing up looking at the rest of actually. Yeah, so uh, next Monday, October 24th, um, we're going to be meeting my cats, um, Sammy, Lemmy, and Misty, um, and I believe we'll do October 31st is when <clears throat> I've been saying that we were going to do like beetle meet and greets, and we totally can, but I'm thinking that we can meet the beetles and um, we will go through my, we'll do my insect collection overview that day. Because that can be like a grand finale of October. Like, hey, let's go and look at all of the cool bugs in my collection. That would be fun. All right, so, Yahoo! Um, let's see, we've got Invertober stuff. Live stream closer. Um, thank you for hanging out with me today. I also teach on a platform called OutSchool. I teach to students ages 5 to 8, 9 to 12. We have a wonderful time. I am just now finishing up and hoping to get approved um, to teach a class on insect collections. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun, and the students who have insect collections as part of their curriculum can join me, and we can build collections together. Um, over there is my um, Insectopia logo, and that is just to help remind you that you should subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you hit the little notification bell, the, your phone will let you know when I'm live. Ha ha, that's kind of cool. All right, so right about there is a QR code. If you want to use it, you can. Um, it goes directly to my PayPal, and it helps me purchase materials and equipment that I need to continue to do this for you. Like, you know, new insect pins and new um, and, and pens and notebooks. You know how many notebooks I'm going through recently um, doing all of these sketches? It's kind of wild. Um, so uh, that has been... <clears throat> <coughs> that has been a great time. Um, so I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Maybe I will see you. Maybe I will see you shortly. And happy Invertober. Stay buggy.